live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the inside scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Welcome to Inside Scoop Virginia. I'm Bettina Lawton and I'm your host and tonight we're going to be talking about veterans. Those of you who watch us regularly know we did a show on veterans about a month ago specifically talking about the veteran treatment docket that they have proposed for Fairfax. Well we're going to go broader tonight and we're going to first start off by talking with Leslie McDonald who is with the Community Foundation of Northern Virginia. She is the Director of Community Investment and the Community Foundation has started to do a lot of work in the last four or five years in the veteran space. So we're going to be talking with Leslie about what's going on and what they're doing. So I want to welcome you and thank you for coming to the show, Leslie. Thanks for asking me to be here. Well, let's talk a little bit about, for the people who don't know, what is the Community Foundation of Northern Virginia? Okay. The Community Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to increase philanthropy in the region. And so we work with donors, um, donor advice funds, scholarship funds, grant making funds, and I'm trying to get people to be concerned about the community and the social issues that are here and encouraging philanthropy, so giving to the region. Okay, now for people who don't know, tell mm -hmm. me in a couple of words what a donor advised fund is. A donor advised fund um, is someone who uh, maybe has uh, some wealth to give and they're interested in giving to charity but they maybe don't want to make all the donations right at the moment and so a donor advised fund is a holding place where they can put the funds, they can take their tax deduction at that time and then they can uh, make decisions about the, the grants that they'd like to make um, at their leisure. Sometimes people open donor advised funds say as a family fund where maybe the parents open the fund and then get the children involved involved in the philanthropy. And what we do at the Community Foundation is we provide a holding place and then we also can advise them based on what we know about the community of places that they might like to put their money. Um, you know, what, depending what their interests are, we can tell them about the good charities that we know about and, um, and then facilitate the gift for them. Well, the other thing that you do that I think is really important is you all handle the IRS paperwork stuff. Yes, we do. We handle the paperwork. that's pretty daunting for people who say, gee, I really would like to give money. Mm -hmm. uh, but having their own personal foundation with all the attendant problems with boards and filings and all of that kind of stuff can really deter people. And right. donor advised funds through your organization is one of the ways that they can do it without the big hassle. Absolutely, and people actually can take a bigger tax break um, if they put money in a donor advised fund at a community foundation versus opening their own private foundation. So it's a great alternative, far less paperwork and giving people more time to pay attention to the giving. The other nice thing about the Community Foundation is it's a, a holding place for funds for the community. So people often will leave money in their will to the Community Foundation knowing that it will be set up in a grant making fund to benefit the community forever. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Well, let's talk about the Military Personnel and Families Fund. As mm -hmm. I was uh, understanding it, you all set that up back in 2010. And mm -hmm. what's the purpose of that? What led you to set that up? Well, um, at that time we were making grants um, and we have five key areas of funding. Um, child and youth, education, health, mental health and aging, and poverty. And the board members at the time felt like with the, um, the wars having gone on and the long conflicts overseas that there was a really a need to focus on military families and veterans, particularly in this region when there are so many. And so the, fund, the purpose of the fund was to support military families and military personnel and veterans in our region. And and um, we raised a small endowment um, and uh, going forward now we have a grant making fund forever mm -hmm. um, to benefit people in the region. Okay, now who's gotten it? You've, you've distributed about $270,000 since 2010. Right. Who are the recipients of those things? What do they do? Well, all of our grants go directly to nonprofit organizations who then turn around and help people with the grant funding. So we funded um, um, organizations like Linden Charities for employment with veterans, um, Easter Seals, which works with disabled veterans. Um, we've helped our military kids, which um, works with the children of families that are deployed overseas and provides recreational opportunities. So a whole range of organizations, um, a service source related to veterans and employment, um, you know, lots and lots of the local charities that are helping veterans have been supported through the fund. And so if someone out there has a foundation, a nonprofit, mm -hmm. not a foundation, they have a, a nonprofit that mm -hmm. does work with veterans, how do they 
gain access to that money? How can they get the, a grant? Is there a process for that? There absolutely is. And every year we um, we normally do one, two or three grant cycles per year. So they can just go to our website and look to see when the next grant cycle is coming up. And then the application procedure will be explained on the website. OK, terrific. Well, then <clears throat> let's talk about why the Community Foundation thought that you specifically needed to do a study mm -hmm. of veterans in Northern Virginia, that okay. sort of segment. Sure. Well. Um, Issuing community studies is something that the Community Foundation does periodically. And the point is to really shed a light on what's going on in the community to, to highlight local needs that people may not be aware of. And so that's where the Veterans Report came out. Uh, came out. Now, we had opened this Veterans Fund, and in, through the course of our reading, we really came to understand that veterans today are actually quite a bit different from veterans in the past. Mm -hmm. um, many of them maybe have um, gone to Afghanistan or Iraq for multiple deployments, placing strain on their families. Also today's veterans, because it's an all-volunteer army, they tend to be older than veterans in the past. Now I had read that the average veteran of the Vietnam era was about 19 or 20 when he, because it was usually a man, came out of the service. Whereas today, a more typical veteran is between the ages of 25 and 38. So um, they're more likely to be married. Many of them have young children. And so the impact on both themselves and their family from the lengthy deployments um, is just a completely different thing. So we started by wanting to really understand you know, what was the environment for the veterans? What were they experiencing? And what were their families experiencing? And then as we got into it, we realized that we really lacked local data for how many veterans there were and what their specific needs were. We really had an idea that maybe it was employment and maybe it was mental health, but we didn't really know for sure. Mm -hmm. And so we started digging in to the data to try to figure it out. Okay, and somehow Deloitte got involved in this right. because they their name is on the report, right. the report, and Deloitte's name is up there. Absolutely. How did, how did they get involved? Well, as I said, we started digging into this, and we found that it was actually really hard to get the data. Um, and we um, had the good fortune at the time to have employed a military spouse. And so she really knew a lot of channels, but even she couldn't find some of the information that we were looking for. And we were aware of the fact that Deloitte has done some fabulous pro bono work. Um, you know, they have great analysts, and so we approached them about the project. And at the same time, they had actually been talking to the United Way, who had some similar questions. Mm -hmm. And so we all partnered together with Deloitte, um, contributing um, really the really wonderful analysis that you see in the study and all the writing and everything um, on a pro bono basis, which was fabulous. OK. So what are some of the key findings in this report? What did you find out once you dug into the data? Okay, so the report, um, what it really looks at is both um, that sort of national data of what we know about veterans and their, what they're experiencing, and then they took sort of a follow the money approach, where they looked at the funding streams that were supporting veterans in the region, both coming from the federal government and the state government, and then they looked at also the, all of the services that are currently provided by nonprofits, and, um, and tried to figure out you know, what the gaps were. Now, generally, in a, in a demographic sense, um, what we learned is that Virginia is actually, ha actually one of the four states with the highest concentration of post-9-11 veterans in the country, so that there's a real um, you know, cohort of veterans here mm -hmm. that are the, from the post-9-11 generation. Now, is that Virginia, or is that specifically northern Virginia? Now, that's Virginia as a whole, but okay. we also did find that there are 36,000, give or take, um, veterans of post-9-11 veterans in northern Virginia. 36,000 wow. is a whole lot of people. Yeah, um, and and in the big picture, what we learned about those veterans is in act in the big picture, they're actually doing quite well. We found that veterans were um, more likely to be more highly educated than the general population. More of them have um, at least some college or a bachelor's degree. We found that they um, their unemployment was actually quite low for veterans in Northern Virginia, about two percent, which is better than ever elsewhere in the country, and also better than the general population in Northern Virginia. Is that because we have so many like defense? <laughs> contractors and people who would want to employ veterans, do you think? I, I think so. I think that the um, the region has a very um, robust economy, mm -hmm. and I think that um, there's a demand for people coming out of the military with the technical skills and the expertise and the knowledge. So in, so in the big picture, the, you know, it's quite good. Um, there are also less veterans in Northern Virginia are less likely to be living in poverty. Um, so, you know, that in many ways that was quite reassuring. But it what the study did not do was point us into one thing that said, oh, we have to invest in that. It wasn't 
homelessness necessarily. It wasn't employment necessarily, mm -hmm. um, because when we also looked at the resources that were dedicated to that, we found that there's a lot of organizations and there's a lot of services that are available. So that was a really good finding. Um, but what we did find that is on, uh, the, so that's the macro level, the big mm -hmm. picture. On the, on the person to person level, there were still people who were having difficulty with transition and falling through the cracks. And we tried to, you know, speculate about what, what the reason for that was. And in, at the same time, we consulted with what other communities around the country were finding. And what, what in many cases we're finding is that um, the array of services that are available are very complex. Mm -hmm. And so it's very difficult to navigate your way through that as a veteran, particularly if you happen to be in a crisis. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to know, you know where you should go or what the benefit you might be avail it might be available to you and um, so that people really need help navigating. And that the most um, comfortable thing for a veteran trying to navigate the service system, what actually works best is sort of a peer navigation. If they can work with someone who understands military culture, because there really is a divide. Mm -hmm. there, military culture, it, it's a strong and proud tradition and it you know, contributes greatly to our society. But when you leave it abruptly, you can, it can just be a little bit overwhelming. It's, it's just very different. And so if human service organizations are familiar with how to, un, and don't understand how to work with military personnel or veterans, there can be sort of a gap there, mm -hmm. leaving veterans not very well fulfilled in terms of their services. So that cultural competence was an important finding as well. So where are you going to go with this? It sounds like the veterans are in pretty good shape. What's the next step for the Community Foundation? Um, and, okay, so there was really two, really three things, the navigation, the cultural competence, and then the final, final finding had to do with all of the services that were available but not necessarily talking to each other. And that's a really important point because if you pick up the phone and you call one organization but your need is not exactly what they do, um, they're not necessarily going to be able to hook you up with the right organization or the right person. And so what we really felt is that there's a need for all these organizations to do a better job of talking to each other. So it's a service coordination piece. And then we're, we also, again, looked at um, successful models around the country, and that's really the same conclusion that many other communities have come to. So we recently released a request for proposal for an organization that would be able to start to take that big picture work, do the big picture work about serving veterans in the community by trying to connect all the different services together and have everybody work together so that you as a veteran, no matter where you access the services, you get the same messages. And hopefully you get connected to a peer navigator who can actually walk you through what you might be eligible for, and where you can find the services that you need at the time. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you for coming and taking time to explain this. Go to the Community Foundation of Northern Virginia website. You can read the report. It's got tons of footnotes. Thank you so much for coming, Leslie. Thanks for having me.